Hello and welcome back to MLab 1231, Parasitology and Mycology. My name is Dustin Scott Brewster, and this is going to be the third of our four-part presentation on intestinal protozoa. Uh, the first class we're going to cover in this presentation is class Mystagophora, which includes Giardia lamlia, Diantamoeba fragilis, Chylomastix mensleyi as well as the Trichomonas, which are also a member of class Mystagophora, and include Trichomonas hominis and Trichomonas vaginalis. This class is known as the, excuse me, this class is known as the flagellates, and they inhabit areas of the body such as the mouth, bloodstream, gastrointestinal, and urinary tracts. First organism is Giardia lamlia, formerly known as Giardia intestinalis, and it is the most common protozoan in the United States. Infection of this organism uh, occurs through fecal-oral contamination, cont through contaminated food or water sources. It is very common amongst daycares, and as you can see on the bottom left and right images here, the cyst stage on the bottom left measures 9 by 12 microns with 2 to 4 nuclei, and a parabasal body. On the bottom right, right here, figure 16, we have a trophozoite with a dorsal ventrally flattened bilateral symmetry with four paraflagella sticking off the posterior end here and an axostyle uh, as well as a parabasal body. So we can have the axostyle running down the organism, bilateral symmetry, with the four flagella sticking off the posterior end. The life cycle of Giardia lamblia begins with the cyst ingested through food, water, or fecal-oral contamination. That cyst then exists in the small intestine, releasing trophozoites. One of those cysts equals two trophozoites when it exists. Those trophozoites then multiply by longitudinal binary fission. Then they attach themselves or live freely in the lumen of the proximal small intestine. And as the trophozoites migrate toward the colon, they begin to incyst again. This infective cyst stage is then passed in the feces of the host where the life cycle continues. Symptoms of Giardia lamblia include abdominal pain, foul-smelling diarrhea or gas, irritation of the intestinal mucosa, and malabsorption syndrome. To note is that outbreaks are commonly seen when water systems are contaminated with sewage runoff or sewage waste, and travelers who contract Giardia lamblia typically have more violent, aggressive symptoms than locals. Um, and it is common amongst the homosexual male community. So let's distinguish artifact from parasite. So on the left here, we have a yeast cell. There's no evidence of the axostyle, and there's no nucleus. While on the right, we have an axostyle present, as well as a nucleus for the Giardia intestinalis or Giardia lamlia. Next we have Diantamoeba fragilis. This was, as you recall in the second presentation, formally classified as an amoeba and uh, beneficial to distinguish from Entamoeba histolytica. It is distributed worldwide and is often associated with pinworm affection, infection, and it is believed that Diantamoeba fragilis is uh, passed within the egg of Entrobius vermicularis. The trophozoite of Diantamoeba fragilis is binucleated with fragmented karyosomes with four to eight granules of chromatin. It has one to two nuclei with little peripheral chromatin, and it also may have ingested red blood cells seen, from, seen with Entamoeba histolytica. Um, the cyst stage was, it was believed to not exist in Diantamoeba fragilis until recently. Uh, I read in a recent report that the cyst stage can occur but is rarely seen. 
The life cycle for Diantamoeba fragilis uh, is poorly understood, but it is believed that transmission occurs through fecal oral transmission and may, may also be transmitted, as we discussed, through the helminth egg of Enterobius vermicularis. Those trophozoites, once ingested, reside in the lumen of the colon and also replicate via binary fission. Next, we have chylomast chylomastix mensleii, which is non-pathogenic, but needs to be differentiated from giardia. Uh, like giardia, transmission occurs from ingestion of the mature cysts through food, water, or fecal oral transmission. The cyst is lemon-shaped with one nucleus, and a cytosome may be present. The trophozoite is pear-shaped, measures 6 to 24 microns, with a rounded anterior end and a tapered posterior end and it has a eccentric karyosome present. So here we have the nucleus with the eccentric karyosome and the pear shape, and this is the trophozoite of Chylomastix mensleii. Uh, also note there's no uh, parabasal body or axial style present in this guy here. So distinguishing artifact from parasite again, on the left we have a yeast, uh, yeast cell, which is somewhat lemon-shaped. Um, again, there's no evidence of any nucleus or cytosome. On the right, we have Chylomastix mensleii, which is lemon-shaped, and it does contain a nucleus, seen right there. And there is evidence of a cytosome in this guy. There's the nucleus right there, eccentric karyosome. Next, we're going to jump into the trichomonads, which are also a member of class Mystagophora. Uh, clinically relevant are the trichomonas hominis and trichomonas vaginalis. The general characteristics of these guys is that they have a protoplasmic membrane, a flagella with several clustered in a tuft, which is what serves as their means of locomotion. They possess an axostyle, which functions for support, and a costa, which is a firm rod-like structure which runs along the base of the undulating membrane. These guys also have a cytosome, which is a rudimentary mouth. So uh, we saw these images earlier in the presentation. This is actually Trichomonas vaginalis. And we'll get into that, I believe, our next. Nope, Trichomonas hominis first. Trichomonas hominis is non-pathogenic, but must be differentiated from Trichomonas vaginalis. It's transmitted by ingestion of fecally contaminated food, water, or fomites, and it resides in the large intestine and is shed in the feces. This guy has a jerky motility, which can be seen on a wet mount. And in this image here, we have uh, a trichrome stain of Trichomonas hominis. The morphology of Trichomonas, homino Trichomonas hominis the, for the trophozoite measures 6 to 20 micrometers with five flagella, which four are directed anteriorly and one directed posteriorly along the undulating membrane. That undulating membrane runs the full length of the body, important to note. It has a single nucleus with a small karyosome, and this cyst stage has not been documented. Next we have trichomonas vaginalis, which causes trichomonid vaginis, vaginitis. Uh, it is distributed worldwide and spread from person to person through sexual contact. So this is a sexually transmitted infection, an STI. It is diagnosed by recovery of the modal trophozoite in vaginal discharge, smear, or in urine. The trophozoite for Trichomonas vaginalis measures seven to 13 micrometers with five flagella four anterior directed, one posteriorly directed along the undulating membrane, but unlike Trichomonas hominis, this only runs half of the body. It has a large nucleus with a small karyosome 
and uh, also no cystage is no. So the life cycle of trichomonas vaginalis, it is a sexually transmitted infection, begins with uh, through sexual intercourse, person to person contact, that organism is passed uh, through genital contract um, and it replicates through longitudinal binary fission. Trichomonas vaginalis infection in women can uh, be persistent and cause vaginal inflammation as well as vaginal discharge which can be yellowish, frothy, and foul smelling which are characteristic signs of trichomonas vaginalis infection as well as a burning sensation while urinating and itching and irritation of the vagina. In males, however, it is mostly asymptomatic uh, and rarely seen in male urine samples. Um, to note about trichomonas vaginalis is that it must be differentiated from trichomonas hominis, and one of the easiest ways to do that is that trichomonas vaginalis, uh, a clean sample, uh, is found in the urine of urethral swabs and infected hosts, and Trichomonas hominis is found in the stool. So unless uh, contamination occurs, Trichomonas vaginalis is only going to be seen in the urine, and Trichomonas hominis is going to be found in the stool of the infected host. So that's going to conclude the third of our four-part presentation series for the intestinal protozoa. We'll pick this back up with our last class and that's it.